y'all it's chloe and we're back with another video this is married at first sight season 16 episode 7 and guess what i figured out i figured it out y'all i know why the episodes are so short this year they're short because none of these couples gonna stay together <laughs> No one's going to make it to Decision Day. I feel like all these couples are going to tap out before Decision Day. I promise you that's how I feel. And I bet you that I'm not wrong. Anyway, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get into this review. But before we do, I need you to do me a favor. If this is your first time here, I need you to sit back, relax, watch this video on through. And if you like what you see and you like what you hear, press that subscribe button and that like button. Enjoy the family. If you're one of my subscribers and one of my lovely members, hey y'all, how y'all doing? So let's go ahead and get into it. So the episode starts off with Gina, real close up in her diary cam, talking about how she had a conversation with Clint and the conversation didn't go the way she wanted to. She's still so disgusted with the remarks that he made about her physical appearance and the fact that he sees nothing wrong with it it just gives her a lot of red flags girl shut up shut up you made this comment up in your head because he did not say what you say he said it was nothing wrong with what he said so i see why he didn't apologize and you so hell-bent or trying to make him seem like the wrong person that you won't even admit to the faults that you have in the comments that you made but that's neither here or there we're gonna keep moving so Clint goes to talk to Aries and Chris and he's telling them how he felt like she attacked him after she came from talking to the girls. Of course she did because they put the battery in her back to go ahead and get her all riled up to go and confront him. So he's telling them like, I just don't understand like what the big deal is. She just feels like this is unforgivable and she's never going to move past this. And then he tells them that she was calling him a ginger and she wasn't saying it in a daring way. And like he felt offended by it. Well, then here comes Aries saying, well, you probably should just listen to her and validate her feelings. Absolutely not. Don't validate delusion. Don't validate delusion. Yeah, you could have felt some type of way, but you're feeling some type of way from something that was not stated. So no, don't validate her feelings in this particular instance because it's all fabricated. She's literally making this worse than what it needs to be. He stated his preference and she caught offense to it over her own insecurities like the men discussed. Maybe she felt some type of way about her weight in the past. And she did because if she didn't, she wouldn't have caused this big old scene. Just doing too much. Clint feels like he's been typecast now as the guy who doesn't like bigger women. Because she done made this whole scenario up as if he only wants to date someone small and athletic and slender. When that's not the case because he clearly wanted to bang you on the first night that y'all met when he was all caressing your back. So we're not even about to fall into a Clint. Don't worry about it. He does agree that his delivery could be different. And I said that. I think that because he gave no context behind the statement he made, that that's why everyone took it that way. Maybe he could have delivered it better, but it still doesn't take away the fact that she made, she added and subtracted stuff from his statement. It just doesn't. I just find it so weird how him saying that he used to date more slender and athletic women is such this big old deal, but the fact that she was calling him a ginger in an offensive matter is not that big of a deal. I feel like we're not, this is not making sense at all. So now everyone goes to dinner and we find out that Clint and Gina talked again. So Clint went back with the information that, you know, Chris and Aries gave him and he had a sincere conversation with her and he apologized to her. And now she feels like they're in a better place and they can move forward. So when we get to the dinner, Clint decides that he's going to stand up and they are like, yeah, stand up, man up, man up. Say what you got to say. Say what you got to say. Uh, whatever. He tells them that he's very straightforward sometimes and he says some crazy things. So then Jasmine was like, yeah, you just came in swinging strong and hard. I'm like, girl, you shut up. You shut. You shush. Okay. Um, but he was like, but I want to focus on the wrong part. He says that his comment wasn't supposed to come out the way that it came. And he just was trying to give some context to the type of women he used to date. And maybe um, it came off wrong. What I will say is that he did not apologize and i'm fine with him not apologizing everyone else could be in their feelings about it but you didn't do anything wrong i'm sorry if you interpreted that way 
That would have been my apology. I'm sorry if you felt like I was trying to offend you. Because baby, I wasn't. And no, I wasn't talking about you. So now everyone's sitting at the table like, I want to hear what you got to say, Gina. I want to hear what you got to say. How about you ask Gina to apologize for calling him a ginger and saying that she's not attracted to ginger people with light skin and freckles and red hair? How about y'all have to apologize for that? I don't like the way that this is all playing out on the screen because they really sit here making it seem like Clinton's this horrible guy. Yeah, he may be rough around the edges, but in that instance, and in that case, he did not do anything wrong. So now he can't even specify what he used to date or the women that he used to date, what they look like. Child, hang it on up. Call it a day. Call it a day. I'm over it. I'm over it. She's sitting there talking about some. I'm just happy that we can, you know, that we got through it and we talked about it. And he understood where I was coming from. We don't care. I'll be the first to tell y'all I don't care. I'm over it. I don't want to hear about this. Since she forgave him, everybody else forgave him. And now we can move on with our married day. I don't want to hear about it no more. She's just happy that he said that she's attractive and she's pretty. Because that's all she really wanted to hear. Because there's no way in the world he could not be attracted to her. Ugh over it so now that we've been talking about you know how relationships is going it's time to just go ahead and rate our whole relationship as a whole i don't like this idea of written relationships but i get it in the sense of married at first sight it's kind of like to just gauge where the people are and this is a rating based on the whole marriage okay so attraction chemistry um and how they feel emotionally all put into one so McKinley says that he's basically the problem in their relationship. So he just going to give it a seven and a half because he was working on all the things that she find wrong with him. And she's like, I agree with that. I agree with that. Chris is giving deaths for y'all. He said it's an 8.2. And here go Nicole. I'm not going to lie. I was going to say the same thing. It definitely is an 8.2. But you know, we got to give it some We got to give it some time to grow. So I can't rate it too high. Whatever works for y'all, 8.2, I think they're the only one that may can actually say that they have good chemistry, good physical attraction, emotionally intelligence, because um, they're doing a lot of the work. So I'll take their 8.2. So Clint's in the confessional saying that Chris is a little bit passive and Nicole is going to take him on a ride and not in a good way. Not saddle up, ride me, baby, but a ride like, oh my God, I need to get off. I feel sick. <laughs> okay. So Kirsten says, and she's at a seven physically and emotionally and Shaq would agree. And I'm sitting here like the lies, the lies, the lies that you tell. Kirsten, you don't even like this man. He jokes too much and not attracted to him. How did we get to a seven? Hmm? How? But I'm going to let you have it, sis. I'm going to let you have it. Gina says that she's a five. It's a half and half for her. Clint's just happy that, you know, it's at a half because that means there's still a chance that they can grow in this relationship. So he's going to give it a 5.3. Throw the whole relationship away. Throw all these relationships away. I told y'all that the episodes are going to be short because these couples are not giving. They're not going to stay together to make it to decision day. I think this will be the first season where more than one couple won't make it to decision day. I promise you it won't. I promise you they won't, okay? So Jasmine is still stuck on the fact that Aries has never been in love or whatnot, so we're going to drag this out for the whole season. So she's going to give it a seven and a half, maybe an eight. And I'm sitting here like, girl, what? Aren't you concerned with the fact that the man hasn't tried to jump your bones even though he was trying to jump your bones so hard on the first two days and then he just stopped? So how are we at almost an 8, which is closer to a 10? Make it make sense. So, of course, he goes and gives it a 6 because, you know, I'm not going to give her exactly what she gave me because, of course, she's more into him than he is into her. So it would make sense for him to give her a lower rating. Then they want to give us a clip of how he said she was more of a four and five when, um, when it comes to being attracted to her. So I said, add one more point for personality. I guess we got a six. I guess. <laughs> Child. These people don't like each other. They don't like each other. Chris was in a confessional like, I think somebody lying. And they is. And it's mostly everybody. It ain't just some people. It's all of y'all. Only people who wasn't lying is Chris and Nicole, in my opinion. I'm just saying. So then Chris wanted to ask Aries, well, since you've never been in love, do you feel like you could be in love? Do you see yourself falling in love with Jasmine? And he like, I mean, that's why I signed up for the show. That wasn't the question, Aries. The question was, can you see yourself falling in love with Jasmine? Now, why did you sign up for Married at First Sight? See, it's the, it's the, uh, it's the play on words for me because that's what he's doing.
That's exactly what he's doing. But okay, it is what it is. But y'all, y'all may think that Chris ain't got a little backbone, but he talk a lot of ish in them confessionals. I'll tell you that. Because he was sitting there talking about something. I think Jasmine's ready to be a wife, but Clint's not ready to be a husband. But you ain't going to tell it to his face, though. But I'm going to mind my business because that ain't my business. <laughs> So doing the diary cans for the next day, we find out that Clint got bowel issues. I don't know why we need to hear about his issues with using the bathroom and his stomach being messed up, but hey, here we are. Uh, Aries is telling us that he feels guilty that he hasn't shown as much interest in Jasmine as she is him. Mm. But you had a sick sir, okay? So Dom and McKinley are talking, and she's still bringing up old ish, even though he apologized for it. So I don't know why we still have this conversation. She wants to still talk about how she wants him to be excited to do the things that they're doing. Girl, if he's not excited and he promised not to complain about it, you can't force it. Maybe he don't want to do it, but he's still doing it. And if he's changing his attitude about it, then it is what it is. You don't need to be his cheerleader. She feels as though she needs to be his cheerleader and, you know, push him in and cheer him on. No, you don't. The man's doing it because he wants to do it for you, not because he actually wants to do it. And half the time, that's what marriage is, doing stuff that you don't want to do because your spouse want to do it. Get over it. As long as he's not going to keep complaining and being negative about it like you asked him to and he apologized for it, why are we still talking about it? McKinley was fed up because he feels as though she's being very judgmental. He's giving her the benefit of the doubt, but she's not doing the same for him. Like, it's only been a couple of days. Give me a chance to show you that I am going to work on those things. He says that it feels like it's either her way or no way, and that's the truth. I don't know what high horse Dom's sitting on, but baby girl, come down. Come down because you're doing way too much too early for no reason. So now Chris is outside crying his poor little heart out because Mavs done set him up, okay? <laughs> they don't gave them a two-dog limit. Get a cat. <laughs> I keep trying to tell y'all people, get a cat, get a cat, get a cat. Lindsay and Mark had 18 cats in that apartment. Ain't nobody said nothing. Get a cat. Why would they go pick all these people who got all these daggone dogs and get them a two-dog limit? Because last time I checked, Jasmine got like 14. So what's she going to do, child? I hope she don't be sitting outside crying her poor little heart out. I feel like Maz did this on purpose. They saw what happened between Alexis and um, Justin last year and was like, okay, dogs cause drama. Let's add some drama and take away some of the dogs. So now he over here crying his heart out because there's no way he could abandon his dogs, even though he been on his honeymoon for seven days and he ain't cried not one time. He's willing to do any and everything. Going to check up on his dog every day is where he draws the line. So now, Nicole got to go put on her Lindsay hat and be Captain Saber Chris and figure this whole thing out because he's so emotionally unstable, there's no way he could think about a resolution. So she goes and calls her dad and says, Dad, is it possible for you to, you know, watch the dog every now and then and again and we could figure out a way so that Chris don't have to give up his dogs for two months even though we in the same state and it's probably 20 minutes away from us? Dad says, sure, I'm here, whatever you need. I'm like, I, grow up, grow up. Instead of sitting there crying about these dogs, how about we find a solution? Baby, I watched this for five seconds and I said, why don't y'all just swap the dogs out? It's three dogs, two dog limit. Every other night, y'all take one dog, go get another dog. Take one dog, go get another dog. The dog will be okay for a couple of hours. Go see the dog in the morning, take it for a walk, go to the dog park, do whatever y'all do. Drop one dog off, get the other dog. The dogs will be okay. Now, I know, I know some of the dog parents stop there. It's like, how dare you, Chloe? How dare you? But what else we going to do? We going to sit around and cry about it? We not going to move in together? Because you done took this big leap of faith to go find your wife. Now you want to sit outside and cry because you willing to do any and everything except for go, go visit your dog every day for eight weeks. Justin sent his dog to the boot camp and he gave his dog to his friend. And all you got to go do is visit your dog every morning. I'm confused as to what we're making this the big deal for. I just feel like he's doing too much, and that's just my opinion. Now, y'all don't come fight and tussle with me in the comments because I don't have the energy for it. <laughs> I'm starting to think we need to put rules in place that says no animals either. Because the way everybody start acting over these animals, you might as well just say no kids and no dogs because the dog people are extreme. Y'all extreme. Yeah, I said it. I said it. Y'all extreme. <laughs> So now 
Aries and Jasmine are talking, and he feels a lot better now that he done got his some a long time, and he came back and breakfast was ready. So he's the one to ask her how she feel about the ratings because he rated her lower. I mean, it was only one point from her, so I don't know why she would feel some type of way. You only wondering because you know that you definitely rated her lower than what you said, okay? And she's like, I mean, I don't really feel no type of way. I kind of figure yours would be a little different than mine. Now he's rambling and going on and on about um, how time will fix all of this. I know I keep saying this and it's only been a week, but it's, we got time. We got time. Boy, I don't want to hear your excuses. You're not attracted to her. It is what it is. She said she knew from talking to his family that she was going to have to pull all the strings and to get the information and stuff out of him. Girl, we're not doing this. This man's almost 40 years old. He signed up for the show. He's supposed to be ready. You shouldn't have to dig in there and pull anything out. But here we are. Here we are. Then he going to tell her that he has a friendly vibe towards her. But that could be a good thing. Because, like, he knows that, like, if something was to happen to him, if he ever got into an accident or whatever, that she would be right there by his side taking care of him and rolling him over and wiping his behind. Boy, what? No. No, 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 no. Because how you going to tell that girl that she's a friend to you, but you know that she would take care of you if something was to happen? So, basically, what you're saying is, you a friend to me, but I'm a husband to you. So, I expect you to treat me like a husband while I treat you like a friend. Aries, if you don't go sit down, because the statement should have been, I do feel like we have a more friendly connections, but I do know that I care about you, and if anything was to happen, that I would be right there. So, it's definitely still a good thing. But no, you still had to make this it's all about you. You're a man child. Grow up. Jasmine is in a confessional like, friend? <laughs> I'm not trying to be nobody's friend. I'm trying to be a whole wife out in these streets. And I agree. I'm going to just say this. Aries don't want a wife, okay? Aries wants somebody to take care of him because he's getting old. That's it. That's all. Child, he pissed me off this episode. Let's keep going. So now it's time to go home and check out the apartments. We get to Aries and Jasmine's apartment and the number on the door is 313, which is a Detroit area code where Aries used to go visit his dad. So he feels like this is a good sign. Or Jasmine would say, it's good, Juju. And I hope it is because y'all going to need it. The apartments, I will say, are really cute, okay? They real compact. Um, the beds are still so small. I don't know why they keep giving them these small beds, but hey, it is what it is. Aries is a little overwhelmed with all the matching wife and husband stuff. Clint never used a dishwasher. He washes his dishes by hand. Chris and Nicole are imagining where their dogs will sleep at in the bed. Kirsten wants to throw a pool party outside. And that just sums up what everyone's doing when they first get inside the apartments. So Clint and Gina are talking to each other and Clint's telling her how he wants to throw a Mexican fiesta and she's going to try to figure out how she could bring her love sack over for them. Clint is wondering where the dog's going to stay while Gina's at work. Gina says, well, I mean, I guess he might have to stay here or stay with you because he's not allowed at the salon. He's okay with that because he loves dogs and he always wanted to get a dog, but he never had the chance to because he's always traveling. So this would be a good thing for them as a family. <laughs> <laughs> child let me tell y'all Clint gonna end up loving that dog more than he like Gina and that's just that on that so Carson and Shaq are settling in are settling in and they're talking about you know um how organized she is she said her clothes are a mess but they won't be a mess here she says that she'll do his laundry she just needs to know if he has any special instructions he said no and she was like i'm happy you don't because i don't do all that extra stuff okay we're going to do the basics around here but she did mention that she don't like a lot of smells so i wonder if she do put in like fabric softener and stuff like that is the clothes really getting clean? What kind of detergent are you using, girl? Because <laughs> I like my clothes to smell like they just came out the washing machine, okay? I want all the smells, the smells of the smells. I want to put my shirt on 12 days from now, and it still smells like it just came out the washer. But that's just me. Kirsten says she's looking forward to living with him, but it's up to her to make her husband feel wanted. I will tell y'all that that Kirsten is a good actress, y'all, okay? Because I just be like, oh, I want them to work so bad. I know they could work because she be putting it on. She lay it on so heavy and so thick. But Shaq already told us that she be putting on for the cameras. So I got my eye on you, Kirsten. I do. Chris and Nicole are settling in and they love a good old couch. So they testing out the couch. Um, but of course, their home wouldn't be complete until the dogs are there. That's his dogs, of course, because hers won't be there. As they're talking, they agree that they will, will sometimes get annoyed with each other, but they want to have an open line of communication. 
and to call it out whenever something happens so that it doesn't turn into a big deal. So then she asked him, if today was decision day, would you say yes? And he said, yeah. And she said, I would too. Do you love me? And I said, what's wrong with her? Girl, no, that man don't love you. Why would you even ask him that? She's crazy, y'all. Y'all better watch out for <laughs> Chris said, no, but I like you, though. She says, I like you, too, but I'm not in love. Girl, I don't know what's wrong with her, but if you ask that man if he was in love with you, you probably was expecting him to say he is so that you could say it back. If you fall in love with Chris, just say that. Justin said it two days in, so I'm not surprised if you say you in love with him, girl. This is just how it goes on Married at First Sight. It's always somebody who falls in love on the first day. And this time, I guess it's Nicole, y'all. Um, as they're laying down, he's telling her that he's thankful. He appreciates the sacrifice that she made um, with her dog so that he can have his. And I'm just like, Chris, you got a lot of making up to do. You better make sure she feel very loved and appreciated because she's going to go through a hard time being away from her dog for you, especially once your dogs get there. I'm telling you now, it may sound good, yeah, I'm going to let my dog be away. But once your two dogs into the mix and hers isn't there, she's going to be feeling, she's going to feel a void. So I hope that you are actually going to, you know, step up and give her that love, affection, and attention that she would normally get from her dog that now she needs from you. So Dom and McKinley are settling in and she asks him if he has any concern because he's never really lived with anyone. He says that he he has an idea what it's like to live with someone. So she asks him, is he traditional? Like, does he expect her to do like, you know, wifely, womanly things or whatnot? And he said, no, he could clean for himself, do his own laundry. He's not the best cook, but hey, he's been cooking for himself for this long. I'm sure he could figure it on out. She told us that she feel like she embodies everything that she she thinks he needs to grow and the things that he needs to work on. See, this is what I'm saying. Dom, stop trying to control this man. What do you mean the things he needs to grow and the things that he needs to work on? He's fine just the way he is outside that lion part, outside that little old lion problem he got, okay? But just because he's not jumping up and down to go ride some horses don't mean that it's not something wrong with him. It feels like you're trying to come in and take over who he is, which is why he feels like he can't be himself. Because to you, you're judging him, feeling like he has a lot of things to work on and a lot of growing. But I'm not going to hold you, Dom. You might be on to something. Because when we went to go see his house and we're really looking at McKinley, trying to figure out why is he on his show, I can understand why you have those feelings. I definitely do. So Jasmine and Aries are now settling in and they're trying to figure out if they're going to be that couple that poops in front of each other. She says that she don't even want him to know that she poops. And I was like, girl, so you're not going to fart around him? You're not going to do nothing? Mm -mm. Nope. I ain't nobody about to be married to nobody and I got to hide when my stomach messed up. <laughs> Uh, nope, I tried that and we get in my relationship, didn't work out. Don't do it, girl. Don't do it. What's going to happen if you get pregnant and you get gas? You're not going to be able to let it out? What's going to happen if you get pregnant and you get constipated? You ain't going to be able to spread the talk to your husband about what you feeling while you carrying his child? Uh-uh, see, mm-mm. You better go ahead and get over it. Now, I'm not saying be using the bathroom in front of each other because I don't get that, but some people do. Aries is in the bathroom like, well, this is my drawer and don't touch my drawer. And I was like, don't touch her drawer. What's in that drawer? Aries has a lot of things that he doesn't want jasmine to do he doesn't want her to touch his drawer he picked the side of the bed the dog's not allowed in the bed there's no shoes in his house he's going to his people already know there's no shoes so she need to go tell her people no shoes okay i'm sitting here like what's happening and why are you making all these demands as soon as y'all walk into the house but here she is I'm finding out that my husband is so bossy. Yeah, because you allow him. You allow him to do whatever he wants, and he keeps doing it. But okay, Jasmine, you want to be his wife so bad, just let the man do whatever he wants. It's giving Elijah Wine and Katina just a little bit. Kind of like he's going to run everything, and she's just going to follow behind whatever he says. So now they're sitting in the kitchen, and they're talking, and they're eating and whatnot. And he asked her if it was anything about the honeymoon that she could change, would she? She said she doesn't want to change anything because she's a firm believer that anything that happens, happens for a reason. The whole time she's sitting there, you know, talking and expressing how she wants to be able to have an open line of communication with him and not to harbor anything. If you feel something that we need to just talk about it, he going to look up and say, did you say something? Oh, because this food was too good. I wasn't even listening. That's when I would have drew the line right there. Sir, this is why you're 40 and single. This is why. 
And while I was watching this with my husband, my husband was like, he's treating her like a random. He's not treating her like a wife. And it's not even his fault because he doesn't even realize that he's doing it. Now, I feel like Jasmine's going to have to start speaking up for herself if she wants this thing to work. Because what do you mean you're not listening? Don't ask me no questions if you don't want no answers. The same thing that she was sitting there explaining about, you know, open line of communication and talking about things that bother us, that should have been something that bothered you, sis. Because you was literally having a real conversation with him. It wasn't like you was just talking about something random and then it was like ha ha stop playing with me you heard me no he really wasn't listening to you after he asked you a question and you was giving him clear details like I don't like that for her I don't like this for her because she wants this so bad and he doesn't now it's time to go see each other's home now Aries has a nice house okay um he said that she might come in and she might you know open a drawer and see some sex toys now y'all I don't know what kind of sex toys men have but what kind of sex toys men have that he might have some in the drawer that's why he don't want her to touch the drawer when at that that's why he don't want her to touch his drawer at that house okay now I got one and one plus two got it good he has a gym in his house so he definitely works out that wasn't like a show he was putting it on he does enjoy his me time he takes her to his man cave where he talk about women and they drink and they kick it and they watch the games and stuff like that and i'm thinking to myself like yeah he's treating her like a random because you don't talk to your wife and tell your wife that this is where we talk about girls even if that is the case because we all know that men talk about women and women talk about men it's a thing right but you don't express that out loud to your spouse you just don't you just it's an unspoken about it's an unspoken rule. Like you just don't go, yeah, this is what we talk about the girls at. Like, sir, yeah, he's treating her like a random. Aries don't want a wife. Aries wants somebody to take care of him because he's getting old. And that just is what it is. She's fine with his man cave as long as she can have a beauty room. Girl, she's Jasmine, stand up, sis, stand up. Because you just fine with any and everything. Now, I'm not saying there's something wrong with the man cave and there's something wrong with, you know. Um, and there's something wrong with him having a gym. But I feel like, where do you insert yourself in his life? Everything is about him, him, him. He needs his alone time. How, like, what, what does alone time look like to the point where he has a gym, a man cave, and all these other things? Where do you fit in? Because it seems like he's still having the same routine that he had as a single man. But that's none of my business. We'll just have to see how this all plays out. They go into his room. He has his sneaker collection. And I'm not surprised by that. He looks like a guy who has a sneaker collection. So I get it. Um, I definitely get it. He has a um, his father's obituary framed. Um, come to find out his father was murdered. They had a double funeral of his father and his uncle. So I was just wondering, did his uncle get murdered too? I just, it's just a lot of things. I feel like maybe he has a lot of traumas or something that he might need to get out. But we know he has his father picture and the necklace that he wears. Now y'all, I'm not even gonna lie. I don't know why we went to McKinley house. My bad. I don't even know why we went to McKinley's room. Because for what, McKinley? Why you just didn't let, take us to your car? Remember y'all, Christina <laughs> took Henry to her car? Because <laughs> she didn't have nowhere to live but got the nerve to be talking about how small his apartment was. Child, we get in there and it's nothing, nothing, nothing of his. It's not even pictures of him and his family on the wall. It's literally nothing of his. I said we wasted our time. Y'all could have showed us somebody else's apartment. Okay, but Dom is really concerned about the fact that he lives in somebody's, you know, basement. She's trying to figure out, like, why did you come on Married at First Sight to find a wife, but you didn't put this much thought or effort into finding a place to live? You didn't want to find some place to live because of, um, because you just didn't want to jump into anything, but you jumped into a marriage. I said, for once, Dom, you're making a whole lot of sense, girl. What's going on with you, McKinley? Are you homeless? Do you have a job? You came to Tennessee to get on on married at first sight how did you think this was going to play out for you if you got all the money what happened to the money that your mother was supposed to give you why don't you just get an apartment with a month to month lease or something like that you really think that it was a good idea to go find a wife when you're not stable she has no plans on leaving Tennessee and you have no plans on staying. He's playing a game. I don't know what McKinley's up to but it's no good I'm telling y'all right now whatever McKinley up to is no good at all 
But anyway, y'all, that was Married at First Sight. I really feel like this was a filler episode. We really didn't get much out of it. Um, I gave y'all what I could. This is all I got. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Um, and thank you for sticking around. Drop me some yellow hearts in the comments. Let me know that you are here. Don't forget to like this video. Press that subscribe button. Share to your friends. All that good stuff, y'all. I'm going to talk to you later. Peace.